Broken Dub Podcast analyzes what makes Olympic athletes, comedians, writers, and creatives great. Season one is titled Breakthroughs. This season of the podcast delves into the breakthroughs we have in our respective fields. We destigmatize mental health and move past the roadblocks in our minds. Today, we have on the podcast Richard Torres Jr. He's a super heavyweight boxer. That's 91 plus kilograms, 200 plus, plus pounds in uh, pounds. He's born in, on June 1st, 1999. Whoa, dude. Young, you're ready to rock. He's from Tulare, California, out of Tulare Athletic Boxing Club, TAC Boxing. Uh, that is uh, his trainer and coach is his father, Richard Torres Sr. So we have a family of athletes. Uh, and, and obviously we know that you grind and that's what this kind of this podcast is about. Everyone respects the mental grind. The physical game is obviously something that's important in sports, but whatever we do, uh, you kind of exemplify and personify a grind or a hedgehog, someone who works hard in every way. What, what would you say your grind is like daily when you go in the gym and, and what is your, your, the, the philosophy that guides you? Yeah. So, I mean, just a little bit about how I train is uh, when I'm not in camp, I train about two, three times a day. When I'm in camp, which I'm currently am, I'm at the Olympic Train Center in San Francisco, in San Diego, or Chula cool. Vista. And uh, I'm currently training four times a day. I say my grind is, uh, it's kind of, I was born with it. Not really born with it, but my dad, like, taught me it growing up. You know, I, I learned my grind through watching other people. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I see how hard my dad works. I see how hard my mom and my sister works. I see how, how hard my fellow athletes work. And uh, I, I want to be on that level. You know, I want to be on that level where my dad is uh, in just the grind level. And, and my athletes, too. You know, I see the wrestlers doing all, all they do. I see everyone and how hard they train. And I just try to mimic that. So you so you just like inspire. Like, I got to tell you what, the similar similar things for me. I'm like constantly inspired by seeing other people do it. And I'm just like, let's go. It's kind of one lamp lights the next. So obviously right now you're training four times a day and you still find time to do extra we'll call it extracurriculars i mean come on this is like you know you go above and beyond um tell me what it's what's it like right now training four times a day you were training in a in a macy's am i correct in saying that yeah is are you there right now and no actually that was yeah that was i was in colorado springs actually uh the olympic center in colorado springs had actually closed down due to covid uh and so now this is considered the elite athlete training center in uh chula vista and uh, so I'm really thankful to have us here. We're actually on the tennis courts. And so we have a really cool. nice setup. So we have about two rings in there, uh, like a nice canopy over it. And so it's a really good setup. Now I have a question. Is your dad with you in Chula Vista? He's not. He has to work. And uh, it's, it's tough because I thought I was going to have him in Argentina. I thought I was going to have him going to Tokyo. And uh, due to COVID, I can't, there's no outside visitors, you know, so no one's going to come there. But he's real supportive. I talk to him every day. I, I just finished space time after our first train session. And cool. uh, so he's, he's still on the, he's still on board. So he's still, he's still running the business. And so you have a family of athletes. We know what that's like. I, I, obviously those are you know, star athletes. It's like, wow. I mean, it almost sounds like it, your, your destiny is, is also not just in sport. I mean, I see you do video and you're kind of documenting your experience. What is a, you know, is there a foray potentially in, in that space? Is that something you want to go into one day? I mean, I, I really enjoy it and I don't know if I enjoy posting it. I mean, it sounds really selfish. I don't know if I enjoy it so much for posting for other people to see, but I love going back and watching it. You know, I, right. I love to see what I've done. And, uh, and I think that's amazing. And if other people like seeing that too, I mean, that's just a plus, but uh, that's honestly just kind of a hobby of mine right now. I, if, if I have time, I do it. Um, I've really focused in today, though. I mean, this camp, this, we have about a six-week camp. And, you know, I delete all, most, almost all my social media accounts except for Instagram because I need that for sponsors. But, uh, you know, everything, you know, Snapchat, all that stuff, I, I'm really just trying to, to hone in on, on, uh, on my skill and get focused. I'm like, I'm like, yes, get rid of Snapchat. I'm like, geez, that's <laughs> another one. Another one, I got to go to Snap. I've already done TikTok. I'm like, I'm in the TikTok. Lord, there's just so many. I'm on LinkedIn. It's embarrassing. No, <laughs> no. So, so obviously, you know, you're, you know, Southpaw, right? And, and I mean, that comes with its own flurry of uniqueness. What is it like living in an orthodox world in boxing? But like, is, is, do you, do you, do you write left handed and everything? Like, what? Yeah, right kick, left handed. I mean, growing up, oh. it was a little difficult. Uh, yeah. Like playing outside sports, you know, stuff like that. It was like playing baseball and things. It was a little difficult. But um, I had a lot of benefits in boxing, you know, they, uh, 
I think it's 9% of the population's left-handed, but 40% of elite athletes in combat sports are left-handed. So, uh, so there's a lot, you know, so, right. uh, so I was kind of, kind of born for this, you know, <laughs> in a, right. a kind of cliche way. Of course. But, yeah. And my dad did, my dad, once he saw that I was a lefty, you know, he just ran with it. You get a couple of coaches that they see their fighter lefty, they have a hard time training them. And so they just train a righty. My dad, he took on the challenge and, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm here today. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yeah. I saw it, uh, it, your fight, um, you know, versus, uh, Q, I believe it's Cuba's Pedro Justiz, right? Is that right? Did I say that right? Yeah, Pedro. Uh, Pedro, I mean, what a fight. And you dropped into a, a knee, I believe, with a, a left straight. Am I right in this? Yeah. It was a beautiful, I mean, that's that was, you know, I don't know if it's called a faint. I'm like over here. There was something, you you know, straight. It was, you were so spot on. Is there any, like you talked about combat sports, is there any, I mean, this we know that MMA is getting bigger and bigger every day and the UFC is growing and one championship's growing and they're doing now in caged, like almost bare knuckle stuff or is there ever a, a desire to do that or is it boxing and then go down the pro boxing route and or is everything in flux i give mma ufc all those guys a ton of credit you know yeah. i would never want to take an elbow i never want to take a foot or a knee i've taken a couple of elbows to the face and man that hurts <laughs> i'll let them stay in the octagon but, uh you know the, the sweet science i like to call it the ring yeah that's kind of my domain and i want to stick to that yeah, so you said sweet science, which brings up a great point. I mean, you said your favorite um, musician and musical artist is Beethoven, and with the sweet science of boxing, like, how do you consider a do, you do or do you consider like a a boxing match like you you know like a symphony? How or how do you play it? Like I've I've heard heard people discuss and say like Vinny Pazianza was kind of like sometimes like a you know because he would throw these unique punches. How does that make you feel? So yeah, I mean, I, I do enjoy that music a lot, but I'm, I was also a chess club president, so I kind of view boxing more along the lines of a chess match nice you know, every move has a counter move and um no one move is always the right move you know one move mm. can always have a different move and you have to start thinking you know four or five punches ahead you know that once you punch you know you have to slip move over be able to attack again and get out one more time and uh being able to see the the lines they say in chess and being able to say that in boxing too it, it's kind of cool wow what's do you have a favorite chess film or tv show go we got to hear it right now I, mean, I, I honestly like that new one the uh the uh, queen's gambit queen's I, gambit I, I, yeah that's oh, that was an amazing show i watched it all come on <laughs> beth warren whoa okay, but i mean queen's gambit are also searching for bobby fisher i mean there is something cool that's just uh, fascinating obviously and, and russians are good boxers too just like russians are good in chess right interesting it is a chess game so that's cool to hear you kind of compare that find that metaphor what's it so other than that like obviously what has it been like training for you in the pandemic like is it or is it messing with you is that you know a lot of people i've talked to everyone they're all like domed and sad and so there's some a little bit like we, we miss this human connection sometimes but do you have that no yeah 100 percent. i mean when it first hit we were actually on track to go to this tournament we're going to right now so it really postponed everything about a year. Um, but going home, I mean, I'm from a small farm town and uh, there wasn't really much to do anyways. And uh, and so like it just kind of moved on from like the real scientific type of training to like the old old school type training. You know, my dad used to go out there and I was, you know, uh, breaking cement blocks with a sledgehammer. I was, you know, going on my farm runs. I was going, I was my dad would make me dig, like dig a hole and fill it back up and dig it again, you know, almost cool. like kind of loop. and, uh, you know, that's that, Rocky right there. Know, that's right? the Visalia coming out. That's <laughs> two layer California grit. Go mm -hmm. dig a hole. Wow. Cool. Wow. Yeah, okay. That kind of, that kind of, uh, gave me a base, you know, it, it gave yeah. me a, a, a solid ground to where it's like, all right, let's work up from here, you know? And it gave me the, the the right determination, the right mindset, I think, going into this next year. And I, I, I just, I really like the old school training. That's cool. Yeah, I, mean, I do. That's my favorite, what, what you know, like Rocky film is like Rocky Four, just because there's like the perfect, you have the super gym versus the old school, you know, catch a chicken. Do you ever, is that a thing? Is that, a, is that actually a thing, the chicken thing? One, one time I, uh, when I was a kid, I went and tried to catch a chicken, right? They're little chicks. But then the, the the farmer guy, he let out the mother chickens and I got chased. The chickens are trying to catch me. <laughs> I will never That's get hilarious. the chickens again, man. What's, so what's, when you go in the gym, obviously, even in pandemic, non-pandemic, 
what you know everyone i love watching boxers rap their 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 raps i uh, you know and it's just something it's mesmerizing because you do it with its own artistry can you tell me about that experience for you you know someone has been in the ring for a while if they know how to wrap their hands you know and you kind of you kind of judge someone on on the way they wrap their hands too uh i I wouldn't say it's like the biggest part of boxing but you know you get in there and i remember first learning how to wrap my hands and i thought it was the coolest thing ever you know when i was like eight years old finally being able to wrap my hands on myself uh but you know as long as long as you get as long as you get the 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 necessities covered then you're good does your for a lot of your first fights you know i remember i looked up it says i mean i'm sure you have more now 151 wins nine defeats is that what's your is that your most recent record well, it's actually 162 now. I, I only fought 162. Well, actually, I'm sorry, 162 fights total. So 152 wins, nine losses. 152 wins, nine losses now. Yeah. So wow. Congratulations. I mean, most people want one. You got 152. They're like, can I just get one victory? Um, so congrats. I mean, the way to go. What is the schedule? Is it like okay, run in the morning, or do you do you do you look at tape? What's what's the day in a life? So in the morning, I get up and I go for a run and I stretch out after that. Um, then after that, I eat breakfast. After breakfast, we have our boxing session. Um, from our boxing session, I'll ice right after the boxing session, go eat, cool. come back for our strength conditioning. On uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, our condition, it is conditioning. On Tuesdays, Thursdays, we have a, a strength session. Um, after that, I will go back to the boxing gym and I'll do eight rounds of uh, just movement and I'll ice again after that. Uh, after wow. that, I'll go eat dinner and then I'll go and I'll have a stretching session with some of the guys on the team and we'll just stretch out, kind of deload after a long day and I'll ice back after that. Whoa. After that, it's about nine o'clock and, uh, and then I got to rest and repeat. I didn't, I, I mean, you're tougher than most. The ice bath, you do, do you do two or three a day? Is that right? So the, the, right after training, I just do ices. Like I just, Oh, you just like ice, right, ice your- yeah, to get on the on the hot spots, and then yeah. uh, afterwards, and I'll do one every day, and that's it's usually around like eight, and it, and it just happens to be cold outside too. But uh, man, the ice bath, yeah, it's brutal. But um, and during the ice bath, I've started really trying to visualize, you know, uh, cool. my dad and Coach Billy out here. He really, they really want me to um, to start that visualization idea. They say you can, uh, your mind can't really differentiate the the difference between. A, um, a visual workout and a, and a real workout and uh but i can tell you what my body can definitely tell with my ice. <laughs> you're like t- tell me about this liver punch i'll tell yeah. you what, right <laughs> so his body shots they they feel different than the visual so obviously i i mean visualization for me when i i didn't play a you know sport at your level but i played in college you know a little bit and it there's a lot of pressure and obviously handling that uh I think I perform best when I visualize success. What's your like action word? Like, you know, some people, they have like, let's go, come on your time, whatever. What do you, what do you say in your mind before a fight before between rounds? What is that? So mine, <laughs> mine's a little different than that. Mine is I, I get in the ring and you know, I'm a small heavyweight. Uh, the yeah. average heavyweight is six, five, 260. I'm about six, two, six, one, 225, yeah. 230. And uh, you get in there, and you see that that huge guy right 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 ahead of you, and you know you touch your gloves, you go back to the corner to have for this round to start, and you start thinking about everything you've done to prepare you for this for this tournament, all the training, everything like that. And you go screw it, you know I'm doing this, you know this this is it's time, you know, it's not like a let's go, it's a it's a screw it. This is this is we're going now, you know. <laughs> what is what is that shirt that everyone has? Uh, burn the ships or whatever. It's sort of <laughs> yeah, like that. Right? Yeah, there you yeah. go. How was that, you know, having that pressure from your coach slash father growing up? Yeah, you never want to go home with the coach, right? You know, it's always the toughest part. <laughs> uh, man, I remember we'd have battles because uh, I wanted to play sports in high school, too. So I played uh, football, basketball, and I did track. But after after that, I would go to uh, my boxing practice. I'd run to my boxing practice after one practice. And uh, there'd be times when my dad, he really wanted me to play sports. I really did. And uh, my dad would only want me to box. But he, he really did. He let me play the different sports. He let me, you know, kind of um, broaden my aspects as an athlete. Yeah. And uh, I had to box until I was 16. Um, that was that was a goal. He said, once you hit 16, that's when you kind of start fighting against men. That's when you start, you know, the real things start happening. So until you're 16, you box and then I'll let you choose. And so I get to 16 and uh, 
I'd already been to Russia once. I'd already been to Russia for the Junior World Championships. And I, I mean, I love the sport. I, I, yeah. I fought with it since day one. And, uh, you know, my dad, he really went from, from my boss and coach to more of like, like a companion, you know, he really helps me cool. out the entire time. And, you know, he's still the coach and he's still my dad and we still yeah. have arguments every now and then, but he really does help me out. And I, I really enjoy and I appreciate everything he's done for me. I wouldn't have any other way. So you got the character counts, pillar of respect, you know, that was a huge award. What does it mean uh, to be a leader in that way? And, and how what was it like when you received that award? What was that like for you? Yeah, that was a that was a while ago. You get you did your research, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. I mean, what year was it, that? I might have been in like in grade school still. You know, I might have been in like like a middle school type. But uh, wow. yeah, I mean, getting getting that award, I mean, it kind of kind of validated that I was on the right path. You know, it kind of I it made me know that all right, I'm doing something right. You know, not along the lines of an athlete, but along the lines of being a person, you know, hmm. I, I want to be a good athlete, but I also want to be respectable. And I want to come across as a genuine, nice person. You know, no one ever wants to be that guy. I don't want to be that cocky athlete that just walks around. I want people to be able to, to have a conversation with me and me be able to talk back. And uh, I feel like that, that kind of said I was doing the right thing so far and it continued going down the lines. And with that being said, that was me listening to other people. I was me listening to my dad, listening to my mom, listening to my teachers, understanding that I don't have all the answers and just trying to ask around. And that that did wonders for me. I, I appreciate that. That's that's beautiful. Now, how do you feel, you know, with the recent like thing, you know, things that are in the, the zeitgeist of, you know, boxing is is, you know, because you're obviously you you know it's a chess match not getting hit right and also if you get hit you can there's a potential for cte and head trauma how does that what's the you know you know the inner workings of your community what is the sentiment about that right now is it just like burn the ships or is it like what's your meant like how do you how do you feel about it so my mentality behind all that uh is the olympics is my dream the olympics is my right. goal the olympics is 100 percent. it's what i live for what i live, live to do and you know to accomplish as a boxer uh so that is burn the ships you know 100 percent. i'm all for it when i turn pro that's more along the lines of i've worked this hard i might as well get paid for it you know that's right so the amateur and the olympic style is burn the ships 100 percent. i will i will break my arm for this going pro it's it's a it's a calculated risk i want to get in i want to get out I want to still have my wits about me, you know, going to those longer rounds, especially against the super heavyweights, against the heavyweights there, it's, it's taxing, you know? And so yeah. that's going to be a calculated risk that I'm going to take with my dad. And we see how far we go, how long we go, and we're going to get in and get out and hopefully get some money. How do you feel about these, you know, the Jake Pauls of the world? You know what I mean? Oh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how do you feel about this? And, the, and there's big money in that. Like, I agree with yeah. you, you know, like, Hey, you want to, uh, not to say you know you can go call out jake paul but it's also like go call out you know you know you it's just an interesting thing that's happening in trolling that like you know deontay wilder took care of that one troll i forgot that guy's name but we've all seen him whatever that guy's name is you know um and and the pauls are sort of trolls in in the combat sport world yeah. i mean in their own way they're i mean it, and uh, you know, this thing, I think is just going to grow more and more where people are influencers, uh, athlete influ influencers cross over and play different sports, McGregor into boxing. How do you feel about that kind of crossover? Yeah. So with, with the whole Logan Paul and stuff like that, um, yeah. when they were fighting other YouTubers, I thought they're, they're switching sports. So it's getting more publicity to boxing. I thought right. well, those two YouTubers going at it. So it's going to be a lot of publicity. And I, I was like more power to them. I was like that. I mean, that's their sport. A lot of bo boxing fans didn't like that, but I was like, hey, I was like, I think it's pretty good. Now, along the lines of Logan Paul kind of calling out the UFC guys to box them, you know, I, I would much rather him call out like a like a boxer. You know, I'd much rather have him call out a, a legitimate boxer. Right. I mean, this guy, he's like a gold medalist wrestler, right? That's amazing. This guy could fight, but he's a, he was a wrestler, you know, and this guy's bringing him to a whole different category, a whole different sport. And I think he's kind of cherry picking a little bit. And that kind of, that kind of <laughs> rubs me the, long, the wrong way, you know, but other than that, I mean, like I said, more power to them. I mean, I think they have the fan base and uh, they're making money. And uh, if I could jump to YouTube and just do what they're doing, I would try the same thing, you know, part of boxing in your pro world is sort of cherry picking, right? I mean, that is sort of like picking the right fights yeah. and, 
you just you said it so in a way it's like a game recognized game in a way he's got he's yeah. he's he you know it is if you're going to choose one but i i don't even i wouldn't want to box with ben Askren. i mean he can definitely take a punch oh 100%. holy i i think if it goes past like three rounds I, i'm gonna give it to him like but i mean i i've seen is it logan or jake fighting this guy jake jake's fighting uh, I, I think i've seen the spar and he he's a nice punch you know what i mean so i think if he comes out and does his thing in the first two rounds he might have a shot i think it goes past three I'm going to give the conditioning and everything to the, to the main guy that's been in fights before. The Broken Dove Podcast is sponsored by Kilo. Kilo app takes a qualitative approach to tracking your mental health by analyzing the quality of your sleep, workout, diet, even libido. Kilo keeps me dialed in. We actually have a sports psychologist that's on, um, that we talk to, you know, monthly, okay. weekly, depending on how, how long we need to talk to him. And he really does help, you know, if there's ever like a, a anything wrong with how how the coach would think we're training the sports psychologists come in and really try to get to the bottom of it um mm-hmm. whether it's family issues whether it's sports issues whether it's you know just outside influences that are messing with the training uh and it it's really shocking how how much how oftentimes that actually is you know people usually think it's like oh i just had a bad day of training but it really is sometimes it's it's uh you know tied together with the, like a, a bad some mess up that happened today and uh, the sports psychologist, he, he comes in, he really helps us out. His name's Chris, and uh, he really does a great job. So I really appreciate it. Chris, oh, man, it's amazing. And so so you guys, do you, and how often do you get to see Chris? And Chris, what's his last name? So we can give him a shout-out, shout-out. Do we know? Oh, we'll shout add out. later. Chris, do you know Chris's last name? This, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, shout out Chris. Yeah, shout <laughs> Sports, out. no, it's best. You, you know, you guys feel like friends. So, yeah, man, and then that's cool. It, has it helped you in, uh, elevate your game in boxing like a lot? Like, how can can you talk a little bit to that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, one of the biggest things, uh, not just visualization, but actually just meditation. Uh, he's helped me on that, and just the breathing technique. You know, uh, uh, oh. just trying to clear your mind in total. You know, sometimes when you're visualizing, you you're still keeping that mental. You know, the the taxing of you know another workout but sometimes just being able to clear your mind and meditate helps a lot and it helps me really calm down sometimes that even helps me focus more than visualization so i'm really appreciate him to show me how to do that that's cool and do you guys journal at all or write goals down and stuff yeah yeah we have the uh um well we do the um we write down goals and then we'll have the short-term goals and the long-term goals um when we're in training camp we do the short-term goals and even if every practice, we'll come up with three goals that we want to work on for that day. Um, mm-hmm. And then from that point on, we'll try to further that into having a good day. Because sometimes when you're sparring and you don't think you did right or you got hit too much, you look back and you think of your three goals. And if you accomplish those three goals, it does make you feel a little bit better. Uh, I, I love writing goals down, just like crossing them off. It's, there's something so satisfying about it. So the, right now, this is when we do the rapid fire. I know we are about, we have three minutes left. This is super quick. I want you to just literally think as fast as you can, you know, first instinct on this. This is the rapid fire section. Quick questions. Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua? Tyson Fury. Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali. Klitschko or Tyson? Klitschko. Roberto Duran or Vinny Pazianza? Duran. Joe Frazier or George Foreman? Frazier. Evander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis? Lewis. Busta Rhymes or uh, Buster Douglas? (laughs) (laughs) Go Douglas on that one. Okay, uh, Pacquiao or Mayweather? Oh, Mayweather. Logan Paul or Money Mayweather? Mayweather. (laughs) (laughs) Burger or hot dog? Uh, Burger. Pizza or pasta? Pizza. Favorite post-workout meal? chocolate milk oh that is great okay dude hey man that was amazing richard torres jr he's gonna he's going for gold i do i have a great feeling about this come on southpaw but he's looking right at you coming at you i mean dude watching you fight it's just amazing so i mean it, it, it's fascinating obviously i want to let you get back to training do you want to throw some of your plugs where you, where we can follow and see along you, you know your journey yeah you can follow me uh i'm most active on on instagram it's cool. the richard torres with two E's, I call Shakespearean. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can follow my journey. Uh, my Instagram has a link to my YouTube account. Uh, I do, when it's not such a big camp, I do, uh, you know, vlog a little bit of uh, what's actually going on in the elite athlete training camp. And it's pretty cool to watch. Boom. Thank you, dude, brother. Thanks for coming on. Uh, good luck at your, your next session. What are, you, what are you working on right now? What's the, 
yeah, I got my eight rounds of movement now. So, uh, so the normal workouts for Team USA, we do about two workouts and then a stretching session. But I add on the morning run and I add on the uh, the movement afterwards. And so that's something I do daily. It's something I started doing at home and I want to continue doing that. So, so that's like shadow boxing. And yeah, shadow boxing. And then I, I have a maze ball too. So where you move your head and stuff like that. And uh, so just cool. that will work. And it really does. It helps. And it's kind of, it's like, it's calming, you know, uh, I kind of like yeah. it. Beautiful, man. Well, enjoy the shadow box and, and thanks for coming on. Boom. There we go. Dude, yeah. come on. That was.